I hope you guys love red cards because Arjuna isn't the only buster god coming with Lost Belt 4. Hello everyone, Sober Oni of Gene Day Reviews here, bringing you a servant spotlight for the archer who takes the term Hot Wheels a little too seriously, Ashvataman. We'll be examining his stats and skills, as well as going over pointers of how to utilize him effectively and an overall grade, comparing him to how he stacks up to the other 4 star servants. So if you're curious to learn about how a wheel classifies as a projectile weapon, make sure you hit that like button subscribe and ring my bell so that you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. But for now, on to Ash's stats. Ash has a max HP of 11,245 and a max attack of 10,249, which becomes 9,736 due to his Archer class damage modifier. His HP is on the low end for his class, but he does have the second highest attack stat among all 4 star Archer. Compared to the other 4 star servants overall, his HP remains below average while his attack ranks very high. When it comes to his command card, Cards. Ash has 4 hits on his quick card, 4 hits on his arts, 5 hits on his buster, and 4 hits on his extra card. He has an NP gain rate of 0.58% and a star rate of 8.1%. Unsurprisingly, Ash's stat spread heavily favors offense, with most of his stats being poured directly into his above average attack. His NP gain is only average despite having a strong arts card, mostly due to having only one arts card in his deck. However, his star generating is very good due to his high hit counts across the board. Taking a look at his skills, Ash's first skill is Chintamani Rank B. It grants him one turn of invincibility and it also charges his NP gauge between 20 and 30% depending on level. His second skill is violating the Chivalric Code rank A. It increases his own buster card effectiveness for 3 turns between 20 and 30% and it grants his buster cards the effect of lowering an enemy's defense between 10 to 20% lasting for 3 attacks or 5 turns, both of these depending on level. And finally his last skill is Maharatha rank A+. It increases his own quick card effectiveness for 3 turns between 20 and 30% and it also grants his quick cards the effect of increasing his own own crit damage between 20 and 30% for 3 hits or 5 turns, again both of these depending on level. For passives, Ash has magic resistance rank A which increases his debuff resist by 20%, independent action rank EX which increases his crit damage by 12%, Rudra Avatara rank EX which increases his buster card effectiveness by 5%, his buster card crit damage by 10% and it grants him mental debuff immunity. And finally his last passive is divinity rank A+, which increases his damage by 210. Moving on to his deck and Noble Phantasm, Ash has a Buster Quick deck with Quick Quick, Art, Buster Buster, and a Buster Noble Phantasm. His Noble Phantasm is Sudarshan Chakra Yamaraj, which deals damage to one enemy with between a 600 and 1000% damage modifier, depending on level. It also removes the enemy's defensive buffs, and it grants additional damage depending on how low Ash's health is, with a modifier between 600 and 1000%, depending on overcharge. For skill ascension, Ash is one of those servants who's going to require quite a few stakes, so I hope you've been saving up. For level ascension, he's going to require 4 bloodstone tiers, 24 stakes, 8 lamps, and 10 arrowheads. Bloodstone tiers are best found at Shinjuku to Chome in Shinjuku, where they have an 18% drop rate. Stakes can be farmed at the Gallows Hill in Salem with a 67% drop rate. Lamps have a 20% drop rate at the Jail in Salem. And arrowheads are a new material coming with Lost Belt 4 that can be farmed at the Divine Sky Rock Ruins free quest where they have a 40% drop rate. For skill leveling, Ash will need 36 stakes, 8 bloodstone tiers, 20 arrowheads, and 12 reactor cores per skill. Reactor cores are going to be best farmed at the prison camp in Lost Belt 3 where they have a 20% drop rate. The buff buster men just keep coming. Much like Arjuna whom he shares a banner with, Ash is a heavily offensive buster servant who exudes firepower. His attack stat is a among the highest in his rarity, so he's sure to hit hard even when completely unbuffed. Beyond that, his great hit counts also give him access to some very good star generating for his class, and this high firepower is further supplemented by Ash's incredible passives, which grant him a free 22% buff to his buster crits, a 5% buff to his overall buster damage, and some very good debuff resistances and immunities. All of this, however, is a trade-off. In exchange for these high offensive stats, Ash does suffer noticeably from his fairly below average HP and his inconsistent NP gain. Thankfully though, he does have a way of working around this weakness through his first skill, 
Chintamani. This skill grants Ash one turn of invincibility as well as a 30% NP charge. The invincibility is invaluable for someone like Ash, who otherwise has no defensive capabilities, so it helps keep him around in longer and tougher fights where enemy noble phantasms can be a problem. Likewise, the NP charge is tremendous for Ash given his lack of arts cards. 30% is big because it enables him to NP immediately at the start of a battle if you provide him with certain supports, mystic codes, and craft essences like Aerial Drive or Golden Sumo. Ash's other two skills are much more offensively focused. Violating the Chivalric Code is a powerful steroid that gives Ash a 30% buff to Buster Card effectiveness for three turns. And it also gives his Buster Cards the additional effect of lowering an enemy's defense by 20% up to three times. This is Ash's most unique and powerful skill. The 30% buff of course helps out with his overall DPS as well as his burst damage by buffing his NP, but the additional effect of weakening enemies is very good for not only escalating Ash's damage, but the team's damage overall. With max stacks, Ash can easily inflict 60% defense down on an enemy, which is a massive debuff. The short cooldown on the skill also makes it very abusable and easy to keep around for most of the battle. Ash's third skill works very similarly to his second, but for quick cards. It gives Ash's quick cards a 30% buff to card effectiveness and the additional effect of increasing his crit damage by 30% up to three times. Again, a very powerful buff with very high uptime. It not only makes Ash's quick cards hit harder, but also buffs his star generating and massively buffs his crit damage as well. With three stacks of this skill combined with his passive, Ash becomes one of the few servants in the game that's capable of reaching over 100% crit damage all on his own. All of Ash's skills are strong, but I would recommend leveling his buster buff first just for that overall boost in damage, followed by the NP charge for easier access to his Noble Phantasm, and then the quick buff last since that's more situational for damage. Ash's Noble Phantasm is a single target buster attack that gets more powerful as Ash loses HP, and it also removes an enemy's defensive buffs. There are a couple of things to note about this NP. Firstly, the buff removal occurs after the damage, so unfortunately it won't allow Ash to hit through an enemy's evade or their defensive buffs. And secondly, much like with Hijikata and Ann and Mary, it gets a lot more powerful when Ash is at low HP. However, even while at full HP, this Noble Phantasm can hit hard, thanks in large part to Ash's strong set of buffs and his defense down debuffs. So you don't need to always depend on having low HP to get a lot of good damage in with this Noble Phantasm. In fact, a very good combo for Ash is to activate his Buster buff and then lead his NP chain with two Buster cards before his Noble Phantasm card. That way he can stack the 40% defense down before he deals NP damage. And this kind of flexibility with damage is one of Ash's strongest selling points. He has a lot of sources of damage. He can quickly burst down an enemy with his powerful Noble Phantasm. He can play the long game by boosting the team's overall DPS through his defense debuffs and his high uptime buster buff. And he can be an absolute beast of a crit servant who can provide his own crit stars and crit buffs. There is no shortage of avenues for Ash to deliver damage from, and he can be used in a variety of buster teams with a variety of different supports. Having access to a hard defensive skill with a relatively decent cooldown also gives him a bit more tankiness than most other offensive servants would have at his level. He also has defensive buff removal on his NP, which gives him just enough utility to be relevant for most boss fights outside of just dealing damage. Simply put, Ash is built to always be on the offensive, but he has just enough defense and utility to not be a liability in harder content. Where Ash is lacking though is consistency, and that can be a major issue. Because he has so many different mechanics tied to his skills, Ash is going to require a lot of micromanaging on his buffs, as well as some good card RNG to maximize his damage. There are going to be times where Ash is able to out damage most 5 stars because he's able to stack a 60% defense down and then hit the enemy with his Noble Phantasm at 100 HP. And then there are going to be other times where he's going to be hitting much lighter because you don't have enough quick or buster cards in your hand to stack enough debuffs. 
This awkwardness combined with his inconsistent NP gain and his minimal utility can make him difficult to use. Thankfully though, Ash is flexible and there are a lot of supports that can help him out. For general DPS builds, it's best to pair him with supports who can provide attack buffs, since those are going to stack multiplicatively with his buster buff. It also helps if they can provide NP charge as well. So servants like Maeve, Nero Bride, and Santa Altera are going to be very good here. Bride and Santa both provide good damage buffs, and they provide NP charge for Ash to really bolster his consistency. Maeve also provides a massive attack buff to males, as well as an NP charge much later on after her strengthening. As I mentioned, Ash can also make for a monstrously good Buster Crit Servant, in which case I would recommend pairing him with supports who can start generate and provide additional crit buffs like Osakabe Hime, Caesar, and Bibi. As always, Caesar is one of the best budget crit supports out there thanks to his high uptime crit buff and his star bomb. Osakabe Hime provides strong crit buffs as well as an NP charge and card buffs, and Bibi's card manipulation and star generating is phenomenally good for reducing the RNG on Ash's skill set. Ash's Bondcraft Essence is the one I couldn't obtain. It buffs the party's buster cards by 10% and their crit damage by 15%, but lowers the party's defense by 10%. It's not really worth using this craft essence since there are going to be much better damage options available. Focus on craft essences that grant starting NP charge, or that massively buff NP damage and buster card effectiveness like Aerial Drive, Limited Zero, Collide Ruby, and Black Grail, all of which are going to significantly boost Ash's DPS. For a more crit oriented approach, go with craft essences that boost buster card effectiveness and crit damage like Joint Recital, Starry Nights, Victor from the Moon, or even Holy Maiden's Training if you want to go for a more one-turn burst strategy. Just like was the case with Arjuna Altar, I heavily recommend obtaining Like a Bird when it releases in October of next year. It's an excellent free-to-play buster crit CE that buffs buster crit damage and provides stars. For command codes, I would recommend using ones that buff buster crit damage like Mistress of Heaven since it works well with Ash's passives and his playstyle. Overall, Ash is another great addition to an already OP class. His damage outscales most other 4 stars and even 5 star servants if he's able to set up properly. His defense down debuff provides excellent support to heavily offensive team comps, and he has extreme flexibility when it comes to build, since he's able to fill in most offensive roles. Being such an offensively minded servant, he does lack a little bit when it comes to utility, and the inconsistency of his buffs and debuffs can make him awkward to use and less reliable than other DPS servants. Still though, Ash gets an A from me. He has an unbelievably high damage ceiling if he's used properly, and because he can pump out damage in so many different ways, he's just going to be incredibly powerful no matter which role you use him in. And those are my thoughts on Ash. As I mentioned, he is part of an absolutely stacked banner with Arjuna Altar, and I imagine that a lot of people are going to end up with him while rolling for Arjuna. So trust me when I say he's more than just a consolation prize. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over in our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter, all linked in the description down below. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So Roni out. Later.